Hello out there, welcome back to the bench. And today we're going to be going over how to decant spray cans for airbrushing. That is how to get the paint out of the spray can and into your airbrush um, without making a colossal mess. And um, after experimenting, I came up with the perfect, simplest way possible. Um, but first I want to wrap up. I've just noticed this piece when I was straightening out the spray booth from uh, my last video where I tested the AK interactive and um, I know I tested and, the, and then before that I tested the Sotar 2020 detail airbrush from Badger and with it I took this Gundam piece and I sprayed the edges to show how you can get nice shadow detailing using this airbrush and then the next day the next video I did the AK which was clear and this happened to be chrome so I said, let's see how it looks over there. So I sprayed it, and I forgot to show it at the end, because this is the results of two videos. Look at that nice shadowing. And uh, between the red and the, and the shadow detail, that came out really nice. Just uh, fooling around, so to speak, testing on the video. And that was uh, really not even trying, just because uh, just to show off the detail you can get with uh, Sotar. And then let's see how the red looks over that chrome. And I ended up getting a, a process here that looks great. Look at that. Anyway, <laughs> just wanted to wrap up that uh, those two videos as uh, they came together once that piece was dry. Anyway, uh, in my Patreon, which uh, you'll see a link below if you guys want to join, I answer questions directly, and I will do a video for the test of what they're asking for. And in this case, I was asked, um, can I decant certain paints? And I was asked about the foil paints, and... Um, I did it. I decanted it. I did it on the video. I showed them how I was decanting, and um, the results were great. But uh, after that video, I says, I'm going to figure out how to do this better. Because what I was doing was this. I was taking my uh, some straws, and when I ran out, I ended up cutting my pipettes hair and fitting it onto the front of the nozzle. See it? And then from there, putting it into certain jars with a little, maybe a hole in one of the jars to capture it. I was going through the airbrush. Check this out. I was doing this. It goes right into there, into the airbrush. I took the hose out. And even that made a mess. You know, it, it ends up, it doesn't hold on great, you know, but you get the job done. And I'm like, if I'm going to make a mess, what's the point of going through all of this, you know? I am getting the paint out of it, but it's still messy. So I sat here at the bench, and uh, you know, guys, I came up with it, and it was quite simple. Now, first, you guys should do a mask, wear a mask for this, because uh, you're pretty close to these spray paints, and you're not going to be in the booth. You can turn the booth on. That's where I did this when I was experimenting. Just turn on your booth and do everything inside your spray booth or outside where you do it. But uh, I do like this Rhino mask quite a lot. Uh, Rhino is the brand. This is a half mask. It leaves it so I can wear my glasses over it. And it has replaceable filter pads. It's, it's really nice. It's under 20 bucks. It fits really good. So I, I'll put a link below for this mask. I really like this mask. I mean, I, I man, I want to say it's not even 16 or 17 bucks. And you guys will use it every day. So I get a lot of questions as to what mask I use. And this is it right here. All right, let me put that aside. All right, so now you can use any kind of jar you want. Now, if you're going to do primer, I would unload all of this into a big jar, all right? And then from there, put it in a squeeze bottle, and you have your primer all ready to go. And it depends on how much you want to do. Now, if you want to do a small amount and you want to keep it, you get a smaller jar, or you can put it in a cup, right? Sorry, guys, it's shaking. And then uh, just use what you need right there, and you're all set. You don't have to save anything. But if you want to save it... Particularly, I would say primers or flat blacks that you're going to use all the time. Then uh, decant the whole thing into a jar. Matter of fact, these mason jars are awesome. How much was this? Two ninety nine at uh, what's that say? Hobby Lobby. And uh, these things really, you know, because they're for uh, preserving, they really go airtight. I transferred all of. I'm transferring. I should say. I just started. All of my two K clears that come in the cans. You know the the paint cans. I put them all into these, and they're easy to open. No more screwdriver for the paint can 
these ball mason jars are fantastic and uh, they will get the job done but uh, yeah so I mean you could take the primer out put it in here or like I said keep a little bit in here and uh, spray it out as you go but I got all these here we're gonna just show you how to do one on a couple of them we'll spray a couple and uh, I'm just gonna give you guys the process and you can take it from here um, we can actually start with a cup even with this process you're gonna need a rag this is an old t-shirt of mine all right I'll change the camera in a second so what we're gonna do here is uh, it doesn't matter which I mean I have duplicolor here I got this bear look at this bear dark steel um, we're gonna try all well, I've tried several they all work good but on camera we're only gonna do a couple but um, take the foil and sell this red I haven't even done this one yet I bought it like this and I complained and they gave me a discount turned out to be good anyway all right we're gonna shake this up and what you want to do is once we get it into our cup our glass our jar you want it to degas means let it you're gonna let it sit 15 minutes is good is uh, actually really good that's all you need I'm gonna shake this off camera hold on guys let me pause this and shake this up all right guys we are back we are shaking up and this is as basic as it gets and uh, it works for me and I've been doing it all week practicing to make sure it uh, it it is the way to go and it, to me it is the way to go I'm gonna take your rag and use a jar or a cup we'll go with a cup here get your nozzle over the cup see it over the cup cover everything up and just blast now if you want to hold it up you can but this is a full can so I don't have to um, go too nuts on an angle it's very cold when it comes out you can feel it on the cup how cold it gets all right there we go and there it is look how much I blasted out already make sure you fold the rag so it don't get um, paint on you and there it is it's got a lot of bubbles in it so we're gonna let that sit and uh, let me put it through uh, a clear glass so you guys can see it hold on I'm blocked here by paint and robots all right here we go get rid of that cup and there it is you can even see some of the metallic in there see the silver metallic it's settling in the bottom you're gonna want to uh, give this a good mix when we go to spray it there it is see it the foil like that's what they call the foil the pot of the foil metallic that's one now I also did uh, I did a bunch of primer I mean I did um, let's try let's try this test all right that's one we'll let this degas now I do like to put mr. leveling thinner in uh, most of them if, if most of these are solvent based but when I say some just a couple of drops that's it and you can put a retarder in there what happens is it uh, helps it level out and smooth out slows the drying time but not by much you know but this stuff will dry fast but you're gonna get your money's worth on things like these big cans I mean if, if this dark steel was I think 590 look at this thing 11 ounces you can do a lot of kits decanting this and spraying it and uh, the reason why you got to decant them is these, these nozzles are just too heavy they just load the kits up you lose a lot of detail it's just too much whereas the airbrush we can control everything you know let's go ahead and try this testers what is this called extreme lacquer maybe in this we should use the extreme Patriot right to paint this that'd be a good match anyway what color is this fiery orange half of the cans at Hobby Lobby went up in price this was still six bucks but I think one of the clears yeah these are still six bucks but there was another one that went to 11 and she says I said she the woman that was working there. she says only some have come through with the price increase but they are all going up she, she did acknowledge it there was a slight delay in the price increase but they're starting to come through now all right let's do the same thing we're going to hang over the cup I'm gonna get our rag let's get this red one out of the way we don't want to spill what we just did and here we go make sure you double up on the rag triple up on the rag so it is going to kick up 
Well, most of the time you don't need much unless you're going to decant the whole can. Let's see what we got. There we go. See all the bubbles? We're going to get those bubbles out of there. So, roll the rag up so you don't get any paint on you. Look how clean it stood. Perfect. And there we go. So we did the foil. We did that. What else can we try here, guys? All right. We got the red foil. We should do one of these metallics, right? I did one of these, so I'll show you the result on the foil. Let's try the bare one. Let's go ahead with the bear. Now, look at the bubbles have already started to uh, decrease. See it? Already. So you just let it settle in. There they are. See, it all fizzled out already. I like to let it sit about 10 minutes, 15, even 20, while I prep the, the guns of the spray booth. So let's go ahead and do another one. Now, I'm going to try to see if this is a different type of nozzle. Yeah, it is. See it? This one's going to be a little trickier, but we should be able to do it. All right, let me pause the camera while I shake this. All right, guys, we are back. I shook it up quite well. I just picked this paint up, I think, yesterday. Um, I don't know who had it. Lowe's. My local Lowe's. If you're from America, that's an American hardware store. Okay, here we go. Let's get this. Get our other ones out of the way. We don't want to make a mess. Same thing. Cover up. Make sure it's flat and smooth. There we go. All right, here we go. That should do it. All right, we're going to come in again, cover it up. I don't need much for testing, but I'm doing this so you guys can see the paint as it mixes up. Now, if you're gonna, this is a different type of nozzle, so you want to wipe that off. Oh, that cup is cold, guys. It's really cold from the gas. Oh, yeah, see, it cleans right up. Here we go. What color was this? Dark steel. Boy, I hope this one's good because I like me some steel colors quite a bit. All right, there's all the bubbles. You can see them. See that? That's what we're going to degas. Now, this had all those bubbles too, but look, they're all gone. See that? All right. So, we'll let this sit. It's starting to gas out already. Degas. What did we start with? The foil? Yes, red foil. All right, I'm going to put a drop or two, like I did in the others, of the leveling thinner in these two. Let's head over to the booth. I'll pick out an airbrush. We have them all back here. Hey, here we go. Extreme Patriot. We have to paint the extreme, uh, <laughs> the extreme testers with that. All right, guys, I'll pick an airbrush out. Um, I like to do a 0.3 millimeter nozzle or larger when I'm doing these uh, thicker paints. But uh, at this point, you can tell they're not that thick. But uh, they do come out heavy. And the point is to get them out not as heavy as the original nozzle is. All right, guys, let's head over to the paste spray booth. I'll grab an airbrush, and uh, we'll show you how these go on. All right, guys, here we are at the paste spray booth. We're going to start with uh, Krylon Foil Metallic Red. And I need you to know, you got to give it a last one last swirl before putting it in the airbrush to get all of the pearlescence and the foil, what they call foil, you know, the metal flake mixed up. I like to put it on the whatever surface I'm on and give it the old wine swirl here. That's it. And for this, let's go ahead and use uh, my Grex, which I've been using a little bit more lately. I do like it. It's quite comfortable. Don't have to put a lot in there. Check that out. All right, let's check the air pressure. All right, um, 18 PSI. Let's go and see what we get. Oh, nice color. Look at that. Beautiful. Nice and smooth. Let's see how it goes over black. Hold on, guys. I'm going to grab one of my black spoons here. You can hear the 2D compressor go on. I hooked that back up. I've been using the Fortress and the 2D back and forth. Look at that. You stop right there, you get a nice look. Check that out. It's a nice paint. It covers anything. I mean, that's right over black right there. 
Oh man, that is awesome. Look at that. All right. I'm gonna clean out the brush. I use a little bit of lacquer thinner and then I'll use an acetone to shoot out at the very end. And then we'll go on with another color. All right guys, next up we decanted the extreme lacquer fiery orange from testers uh, what's it say paint primer sealer all in one uh, we'll see all right we're going to use the extreme patriot for this why not let's match it up i put two drops or so of uh leveling thinner in here let's give it the swirl because this is a pearl color all right here we go nice all right let's go Start with a white spoon. Nice color. You can actually, I can actually see the metal flake flying <laughs> through the air here. Can you guys see that on camera? There you go. It goes on nice. Wow. Let's see how it looks over black. You guys can see it going on a little better that way. Let's get this out of the camera. There we go. There we go. Alright, let's go in for the final hit here. The black gives it a complete different look. A little bit of depth to it. Wow, that's awesome. Let's try it over gray. Let's see what we got here. Looking for a gray spoon. I'll let you in on something. This gray is the Rust-Oleum Primer. Yeah. That's what I'm putting this on right now. Wow, oh, nice looking color. Guess it's more of a car or a hot rod look because it really has a metal flake look to it. but. Look at how nice it goes on. Now, when you put it in the spray can, it's just too heavy. It just goes on too heavy. You end up losing half of the can, too, you know. Let's double up on this. There we go. All right, let's get one more color. Let's go with the white again. A little more depth to the white. All right, there we go. And that's it. That was Extreme Lacquer. We'll go over the results at the bench. We'll do one more, that bare dark steel. And then I'll show you some of my other results. All right, guys. Last, as far as uh, on-screen testing goes, would be this dark steel from Bear. Um, I think these just came out. I'm hoping they're good because it's 6 bucks to get a nice color like dark steel is going to be great. Now, I put about two drops of uh, leveling thinner in here. Let's get this out of the way. For this, we'll try a different brush. We're going to go through all my brushes here, right? Evolution from Hodder and Steinbeck. I believe I put the .4 needle in here. Well, this is the two. I think this is the two. So let's see if it can push it through. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah. No problems at all. All right, let's go over white first and then black. I hope this comes out good because this is a color I could use quite often. Wow, it likes it. It is a pretty good color. It comes out shiny too. I don't know if it's going to dry that way. Let's check it out over black. Some of these paints do not like this black plastic, whatever this is, but most of my all clad type paints do like it. So. Hard to see the, it almost has that initial coat of chrome look. Pretty efficient, still a lot in there. 
Oh, there we go. There it is. I do like this brush. You can get it in really close. It atomizes the paint really fine. Wow, that's awesome. That is a good color. Well, like I tell you guys, it matches the cat pretty close, which is rare. Wow. All right, I'll let this dry. I'll clean out the brush. Meet you back at the bench. All right, guys, welcome back to the bench. And uh, good results. As I said, um, here it is decanted. This is how much I still have left. This is the foil red. Look how much I have left. I mean, granted, I didn't do too much with it. But here is the foil red decanted with a couple of drops of leveling thinner. Let's see if we can get some focus on that. Look at that. Nice and even. It looks rough, but it's not. I think it's the lighting. All right. We have extreme testers. Put it on the black here. Check that out. One's over gray. Let's see. Here's all three. They're all slightly different, but look how nice that came out. Even. All right. This isn't so much to look at the colors. It's to show you guys the process of decanting. This is that bare dark steel. This was the uh, one I had no idea about. I bought it because it was a new product. And uh, you know what? It's a nice color. It goes on nice. And uh, this is white. This is over black. You can see the two differences. I do like it over black. But... Um, Check that out. That's a great color. So this actually goes on good. It works well. And uh, some stuff I did off camera. This is Montana. Now it says up here, chrome silver. See it? Silver chrome. But it looks nothing like that. Now I remember I tested this before and uh, it didn't look like that at all. <laughs> it comes out like this uh, matte aluminum. Now that said, this looks as good as some of my expensive, you know, all clad aluminums and extremes and all them metal colors that I have. This this looks really, really good. And um, I know it's a durable paint. It's actually made for out, outdoors. So uh, I got to tell you, I would use this quite a bit. I would decant this in a big jar and keep it. Because if I need anything aluminum, this is a really durable paint. I know that. So even though it doesn't come out chrome, look at that. I mean, this is a... Uh, Really good matte steel color. Um, here is the primer, Rust-Oleum. Let's move the Grex out of the way here. Right here, Rust-Oleum's primer. Look at that. I did a whole bunch of spoons so I can uh, have some primer ready for when I do some acrylic testing and whatnot. So look how even that went out. Look at that. This is the foil blue I did on my Patreon channel. This is Duplicolor. What color is this? Ford. This is a Ford Red. Look at that. Check this out. Isn't that nice? This still needs to... This, I personally would put a, a clear over this. Usually it comes out dull. But I put a lot of layers on it to see if it would run. And it, it just didn't in my testing off camera. Check that out. That's Duplicolor. I got this at AutoZone. I got a few of them. I got a silver blue. Hold on. Let me show you. Check out this Honda color, that silvery blue that I love. Look at that. So, now that I know it works, huh? look at that. We will uh, go ahead with that. And finally, I did this on my Patreon, the foil copper. Look at this, huh? And being a Krylon, I think they're pretty durable. It's hard to tell on these spoons because nothing likes these spoons. These are just for seeing the colors. But this is a pretty durable paint once it dries. And uh, look at that. So isn't that great? So it uh, opens up a whole new world here, particularly for price-wise. If you're seeing these things at 6 bucks, 8 bucks a can, this is the equivalent of like, what, 6 or 8 of them jars that I buy at 8 bucks a piece? Think of it that way. Particularly the primer or any color like this you're going to use or this... Uh, Aluminum type of color that I got out of this can. I mean look at it. You use these colors on everything So that's the way to go. You get the basic colors the flat blacks or a primer or this and uh, Decant it and you're gonna do a ton of kits with it. This gold. Well, I call it gold. What is it copper? So That's it guys. That's how you do it. It's as basic as it gets. Don't forget to get the mask I showed you and don't forget I'll get this rag out here 
rag over a cup, blast it right in there, and you're good to go. No, technically no mess. I had more of a mess when I tried to attach that straw and thing to the nozzle. Oh, and then I was taping it, and some guy sprayed in a Ziploc bag, and then that was a mess. Just sprayed over the cup, just like that, with a rag over the top. I mean, it's as basic as it gets, and it works. It works. All right, guys, that is the video today. Uh, stay tuned for the next video. I think I'm going to have up my uh, chisel test. Oh, here they are. The Kaizo chisels, I, have, uh, I think I have all of them. And uh, we're going to see how they work. We're going to put a nice plastic sheet out, and we're going to see the size difference on all of them. So that's coming up. And I have a, I'm going to do a test with a bunch of uh, new uh, gadgets, we'll say, that I've gotten in stock. We'll go over some new, new items I got for the bench in one video. I think that would be pretty cool to do, too. And uh, All right, guys, I will uh, put a link below for my Patreon. If you have any questions, I'll answer them directly on video for you through my Patreon. It's only 4 bucks a month. helps the channel out quite a bit. And I'll put links up for each of the airbrushes I use. Do, I do love... Um, I can't even pick favorites now. I, I do love this Grex. Uh, this Evolution from Art and Stomach comes through every time. I use this Badger every day. Um, once you get a great airbrush, um, uh, it's hard to let go. And But I can't play favorites anymore. I seem to like all of them. But uh, Anyway, guys, that is the video for today. Have a great rest of your week. I'll see you over the weekend with my next video. Please like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment, and I'll answer all as many as I can. And uh, we'll catch you all in the next video.